Welcome to this video. This is a tutorial that is a new and improved and better way of making a G-rotor or an oil pump. Uh, it's very, very good pump. The expanding area here pulls in fluid, usually oil or hydraulic fluid, and the contracting area over here will push it back out at a good pressure. Uh, this has been around since I think the first one came out in the 1600s and there's documentation on it, but great pump and it can be a little bit tricky to make sure that everything fits right and that this edge and this edge stay tangent all the way around. So we're going to go over an easy way to make that, much easier than the last video. Uh, to do that, let's make one from scratch. I'm going to open up a new part. And when I open up this new part, let's go ahead and make this inner star first. So I'm going to make front plane, inner star. Now in the first video I made a four and five lobes, so I think it's only appropriate now to make a seven and six lobes. So let's make a six lobe star. And what I'm gonna do is put down two three point arcs and um, make a center line from the edge of one to the edge of other. And then make these two equal. Put the center point of this arc vertical and make these two points tangent. From here I've got six lobes so I want this to be a 360 divided by the number of lobes that I have and that will make sure I have the proper angle. And from here the this put everything in the correct location but I don't need to fully constrain it and in fact these center lines are useless now that I have them in the these points in the right place. So as long as I don't mess with this I simply say circular sketch pattern choose this choose six entities and boom notice everything is tangent on these two but since there's a relation between all of the replicated entities all I have to do is select here and here and say tangent and we have the basic sketch of an inner star. What I'm going to do is I care about this distance. So I'm going to dimension this distance and add a vertical constraint. What I'm going to do is delete this coincident here to get rid of that error. So let's make this <clears throat> a friendly three inches. I also care about this distance from here to here. I'll make that a friendly 1.25. That did not get uh, coincidence. We'll select the midpoint and coincident. Finally, there we go. I will put a radius on this nice friendly even 0 0.5 that is not fully defined because I need to take this center point and make it coincident with the origin now we're fully constrained so I'll add a inner hole of this inner star to be one inch in diameter Perfect. Save that. Now let's make a new part. Now let's make a part like this outer ring right here. And the principle is much the same. I like the front plane. Add three point arc. Another three point arc will make them merge and tangent. Add in two construction lines. And I want seven lobes, so I'll say 360 divided by seven. And I'll make sure that the center point of this arc and the origin are vertical. From there, equal length in the center lines. 
and I can do a linear sketch pattern. I'm sorry, a circular sketch pattern. Send this at 7. These center lines can throw off our constraining. So make sure I clear them out. Now, this point is not coincident with our origin, so coincident. We're going to have a rotor rotating within this inner ring. So I care from this distance to this distance. Now I made our rotor 3 inches, so I'm going to make this 3.02 inches. Also, I care from, well, if this is the line that encompasses the length of the rotor, then I'll select the midpoint on that line, and that will be the axis of rotation just above the origin center line. I select that midpoint and take it to the middle of this arc. That's where the rotor will be scraping around on the inside of this arc here. So what I'm going to do is I'll give it a friendly 1.4 inches. And to lastly add some final constraints, vertical on this construction line and tangent on this. I'll actually reduce this down to one, well, one looks a little bit harsh, so I'll go 1.25. And then I need a radius on one of these. I'll give it 0 0.4 and add a circle to complete the outer ring. 3.25 looks like a good number. Oops, 3.25. A little bigger. Good, so we've created something where our inner star will stay tangent to everywhere. Uh, I have not compared my measurements from one to another on purpose so that when I put it in we can fix problems and go over debugging if you have any problems with uh, <laughs> your design. So extrude that to 0 0.5. Finally, I got to make a back housing and that's important but as far as this video is concerned it's just there to provide mates to the assembly. So let's go ahead and make that. So let's say I have a housing. I'll make that 3.5 also. I'm going to add a center line actually. And on this center line, it's going to come down vertically and have a circle attached to it. That will be the axis of rotation for the inner rotating star. Since the star had an inner diameter of one inch, I'll do the same here. I'll give this one also a one inch distance. I'm going to incorrectly set this circle placement to show you what happens if it's wrong and help you fix it if you've made a mistake. Features, extruded boss base, point one is fine. So let's save this and put the assembly together. So I put in my pump housing into an assembly and add some more components. So I'll first start by adding my mates. You'll notice my hole placement is very off again on purpose to help us uh, debug here. I 
Good, so we have a uh, housing here. Now, you'll see that it's supposed to sit like this, and this tip is supposed to be right here on this tip. So it's way too far up here and way too far up here also. So the first tolerance or gap that I'm concerned about when I do this is the distance from this point to this point and the distance from this point to this point. They should not only be the same, but very uh, reasonable distances. So I'm going to open this. Well, first I'm gonna, what I'm going to do is evaluate with my measure and take the distance from here to here. That's about 0.55 inches. So I will open up this part, edit the sketch, and add uh, 1.55 inches. I'll have to save and rebuild. That's looking more reasonable, but I've still got a big difference between this fitment and this fitment. So I can open up, well, I can edit the sketch here, and I've got a 0.3 radius on my sketch on this outer arc. So I'll rebuild it and come into this sketch and make this 0 0.3. Let's see how that's fitting together. Good, so now this is the problem right here and right here. So let's see how we've constrained this. I've given this a distance of 1.3 inches to the center of rotation. So let's rebuild that. If I'm looking here, that's getting a little bit better. I'm going to say 1.12. I think that looks like a pretty nice fit, but let's uh, check it again. Good. I'm still a little bit too tall here. Let's dimension that. Let's check that. That doesn't look too bad there. We don't have uh, very many gaps. So now um, this will spin independently and we want it to spin as an assembly. So let's add some constraints. First thing, select this inside face, assembly, mate, select this face. I have six lobes here, seven lobes on the outside. <clears throat> so I'll say mechanical mates here and put that ratio in. In this case, six to seven. Make sure that that reverse box is checked and you will be spinning properly. We can see that we've got a pretty good starting point to operate this pump. We'll want to tighten things down, tweak things a little bit more, uh, but especially here, we better, we better take a look at that. Um, this lobe is protruding inside of our star. That's obviously will not work. So, and look at some of the dimensions that I have. I need this to be more like 1.08 and let's see how let's see how that works out that's looking a little bit better um, when I set my gears now my 
I set it off at an angle, so I should probably fix that too. I'll say part, Mason assembly, and delete this gear mate here. And now I can adjust it again to be more central. That's better. There we go. I've always found these things to be a little mesmerizing to watch. We have our expanding area. The face is very close to the other face and nothing collides. So that's a decent uh, pump right there. I'm getting a slightly bigger gap from here to here to here to here so I can lower the hole a little bit as well. But uh, that's the basic principle of uh, making one of these pumps and how to fine tune it. If this was helpful, please subscribe. Otherwise, I'll catch you next time.